Wa alaikum as salam wa rahmatullah. Yeah, maybe you're right. Maybe like 2016. Yeah, I mean, it's, 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 been, it's been going for quite a while. Yeah. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam, ala rasulillah. Okay, so we are still in Surah Al-Ma'idah, and we left off on the 67th verse. And the 67th verse is the one where Allah is telling the Prophet ﷺ, just simply, just simply convey the message clearly. This is after Allah Ta'ala had told had, had, had made a reflection, uh, uh, a way of both criticizing but also calling the people of the book, the Jews and the Christians, to be the best versions of themselves. In which Allah had said, uh, if only they had actually stood and acted upon their books. Into the end of that. And then Allah Ta'ala uh, by saying that in, that some of the minhum ummatun muqtasida, right? That some of them, they they get it. Some of them hit the mark, right? Wa kathiru minhum sa'ama ya'malun. But however, many of them uh, continue to persist in error and in evil. And then Allah Taala addresses the Prophet directly, and this is not common in the Quran where Allah Taala will address the uh, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Directly, but he says, Ya ayyuha rasul, balig ma unzila ilayka min rabbik. O messenger, just simply clearly convey what has been given to you from your Lord. This is something that I think we need to also stop and reflect upon in that over these couple of decades since 9-11, Muslims have been involved and preoccupied with Muslims being understood, which is really to be liked. And I'm not saying that this is necessarily blameworthy. Uh, of course, everybody likes to be liked. Nobody likes to be disliked. This is a natural human tendency. But that has, that has a way of running askew. That can get out of control where now you think that your risala is to be loved. Right? You think that your very reason, uh, you think your very reason for uh, uh, existing is that you are to be liked. Um, and so, even though the people of the book are not, the vast majority of them are not acting upon, uh, you know, their, their, their book. They're not being true even to, the Christians are not being true to Christianity. The Jews are not being true to so-called Judaism. Um, they're not being true to scripture. Uh, they're, they've, they've gone astray. So he's telling the Prophet, look, just simply deliver the message clearly. As I had mentioned, in our little talk after Fajr this morning, that we need to re-engage with our book in a way that the Quran is not just, you know, like a book of poetry or beautiful sounding verses, but rather the Quran is a teacher and a guide. And one of the important lessons we can learn about life in general is that it's far better for you to understand who you are than it is for people to understand who you are. 
And so in this case, Allah is telling the Prophet ﷺ, your reason for being and your job to execute is to deliver the message clearly. Once the message is delivered clearly, there are some people, even with a clearly delivered message from the mouth of Muhammad Wasallam, they still won't believe. But that's not the point. There will be a great many people who will, and that's one of the miraculous things about Islam and about the revelation of the Qur'an and about the nubuwa of Muhammad Wasallam, the prophethood of the Prophet Muhammad Wasallam, is that you can come along and say all kind of crazy stuff you want. The Muslims will immediately know, mm -mm, that's not it. That is not true. And that stems from the Qur'an itself having an imperative for it to be clearly delivered versus it being universally accepted and received. This is a very important thing for us to contemplate. Ya ayyuhal rasul, ballig ma unzila ilayka min rabbik. O Prophet, simply deliver. O Messenger, deliver clearly. Ballig, tabligh. Make sure that this risala, that this kitab is mubalik, it is clear. Because you cannot have a conversation about the truth if the truth is not clear. And this in some ways is how both the people of the book, the Jews and the Christians have gone astray, how, how a few amongst them. And, and here's the thing. If even only a few people understand revelation correctly, then as Allah says, minhum ummatun muqtasida. Think about this. Allah says what? Min, wa, wa kathiran minhum sa'a ma ya'malun. Most of them were aktharahum fasiqun. Most of these Jews, most of these people claiming, right? Most of these people claiming Christianity. Most of these people claiming Judaism. They have gone astray. They have completely, they are not upon what was revealed to Musa alayhi salam, what was revealed to Moses. They are not upon what was revealed to Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam, what was revealed to Jesus. They are not upon what was given to Ishaq. They were not upon what was given to Isaac. They were not upon what was given to Yaqub, Yani Israel. They were not upon what was given to Israel, alayhi salatu salam. They were not upon what was given to the NBA. But a few of them were. And because of just that few that were, how did Allah describe them? As an ummah. As an ummah, minhum ummatun muqtasida. This again is something for us to reflect upon. <clears throat> we might be small in number compared to the rest of the society. But if Islam is clearly understood and clearly conveyed, some people are going to accept it, some people are going to reject it. We already know this to be true. We already know this is... Uh, this is what happened at the time of the Prophet Sallallahu This is what will happen in our time. But the preoccupation is not over whether the people love it, like it, or accept it. The primary, uh, the primary concern is that the truth is clearly articulated and is not going to be mixed in and it will stand distinct from falsehood. This is something that we need to ourselves remember. And alhamdulillah, in many ways, we are seeing the proof of this even in this moment. As the state of Israel and the Zionist forces driving it, as they continue to try to eliminate the Palestinians, as they continue to provide false testimony about this or that thing that happened, it's actually driving people to the truth. And alhamdulillah, we're seeing people, some people are accepting Islam because of it, some people are not, and even those that are not, they're moving more and more towards supporting the truth. 
كنتم خير أمة أخرجت للناس تأمرون بالمعروف وتنحون على المنكر وتؤمنون بالله This is exactly as Allah has said You are the best community brought out for mankind The first thing you are to do as the service for all of mankind Convey the message clearly and distinctly So that even for those people that have not or may never even accept Islam You can meet them in the middle as the people of Ma'roof, Al-Amr bil Ma'roof. So, being truthful, being accurate in the truth, conveying the truth clearly and distinctly is one from the, is from the, the Sabil of the Anbiya, it's from the path of the Prophets and the Messengers, alayhim salam ajma'in. It is from the uslub of the Qur'an, it is from the method of which Allah Ta'ala speaks and teaches and, and, and demonstrates to humanity in the Qur'an. And of course, it is the risala, it is one of the primary components of the very mission of the Prophet Muhammad which was not to be overly preoccupied with winning hearts because Allah is who Rabbul al-qulub wa muqabbil al-qulub, Allah is the one who is the Mu'allif and, the, and the, the, the Rabb, the one that will turn hearts. He is the Lord of the hearts. So people say, no, just simply deliver the message clearly. Because if you don't do that, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Allah is saying, and if you don't do that, then you will not have delivered the message. So it shows it's extremely important to be clear. Some people will like it, some people won't. Wallahu ya'asimuka wa min nas Don't worry. If you commit to being truthful, Allah will guard you. He's telling the Prophet directly, alayhi salam, Allah will protect you from the people. Inna Allah yahdi al-qawm min al-kafirin. That Allah Ta'ala will, of course, Allah will not guide the people who are kafir. So the only way for them to be guided to the truth you have to be a part of that. This is something the Muslims have to understand. We love to moan and groan about society. And I'm not immune from that myself. Sometimes it does get very taxing dealing with uh, the <laughs> hills of society. It's, you know, it, it can be fatiguing. But we cannot also become so fatigued that we don't also call to good and call to forbid evil we cannot want society to be better. We can't want people to be more moral and better if we're going to sit it out. So as Allah says, وَإِن لَمْ تَفْعَلْ فَمَا بَلَّقْتَ رِسَالَتَ Muhammad, alayhi salam, if you don't deliver the message, then the message doesn't, doesn't get delivered. The people will remain kafir, and Allah will not. إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَهْدِ الْقَوْمِ الْكَافِرِينَ Allah will not guide a people who are kafir. So the remedy is what? Right? Deliver and be clear about what was given to you. Now, the other thing is you're going to have to speak directly to these people. They're going to they're gonna have more power than you. They're going to be greater in number than you. But you have to speak to them. Oh, people of the book. Allah Ta'ala is, is, is commanding and making the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to speak to these people that he's having a conflict with. That he's trying to call them to the truth, but there cannot be any calling people to the truth by merely just, you know, massaging their ego. Undoubtedly, that also requires to tell people some things about themselves they're not going to want to hear. And so Allah commands the Prophet Sallallahu to say to the Jews and the Christians, Lasta ala shay. You aren't upon anything whatsoever. Hatta taqumu what? at tawrah wal injil. Until you stand upon your books. You're refuting this man, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You're refuting the Qur'an. You're saying that it is not from God. It is not from Allah. It is not revelation. This man is not a prophet. 
You're disagreeing with all of the ahkam, all of the injunctions, and all the things that's revealed, but you yourself are not even doing what your own book says. So if we go way back, several months ago, when we got to the ayah, where Allah said about Bani Israel, one of their bad habits, what? يحرفون الكلم من بعد مواضعه that one of the things that Bani Israel likes to do is they will change the meanings of words from what they were intended to be to what they would like them to be. And of course, that particular ayah, it was dealing with the hukum ala zina. It was dealing with the tahrim of zina, the prohibition against fornication. And a group of Yahud, as a means, a group of Jews came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as a means of both testing him, but also seeing if maybe if they could kind of get him on their side. And they asked him, Alayhi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, what does your book say about fornication? To which the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam replied, Kana jawabuhu, what does your book say? How can you ask me about a hukum from Allah, about a commandment from Allah, especially as something as major about fornication? There's no need for you to come and ask me about fornication when your own book tells you exactly about the nature of fornication and its hudud, its punishment. Don't come and play games with me. So he went back to the Ahbar, he went back to the rabbis. It's like, why are you guys asking me? You know what it says. Now you wanted to change the hukum of the punishment of committing fornication to, you know, putting, you know, uh, uh, charcoal on your face and riding somebody around on a donkey, you know, publicly to humiliate them when they know darn well that the hukum in their sharia, right? This is a stupid thing today. You get these so-called evangelical Christians and these so-called Zionist Jews that bemoan Sharia. They have a Sharia too. Every Prophet ﷺ was given, every every Prophet was given a Sharia from Allah, whether it was you know in, in something particular or not. So when they come, especially for those given a book, every messenger rather was given some type of Sharia. That's why when you have a book, you have a Sharia. You have laws. They act like Sharia is something particular to the revelation of Muhammad Sallallahu No, every messenger that was given a book has a Sharia. And yet they abandoned theirs and lessened it and lightened it and wanted to say, well, we want to make it this other thing. What do you think of that? And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told him, well, I, I can't change what's, I cannot change what is in your book because we believe we believe in what was revealed to Muhammad. We also believe in what was revealed to all of the other prophets that came before. So consistency is also very crucial. So we have to be consistent and truthful with the people and not be overly concerned with their reaction to it. Continuing, وَمَا أُنزِرَ إِلَيْكُمْ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ And Allah is even saying to the Jews and the Christians, not only are you not, you, you guys, uh, uh, you guys are not upon anything because you don't stand upon the Torah and you don't stand upon the, the gospel, but you also are not standing upon what was revealed to you. Allah says what? وَمَا أُنزِرَ إِلَيْكُمْ The kum here is referring, right, the, the you all, the pronoun of you all here is referring to who? Al Yahud wa Nasara, Ahl al Kitab, the Jews and the Christians. That it was revealed to you. And so Allah is telling, again, telling the Prophet these things that what? Without a doubt, La Yazidanna Kathiran Minhum. Without a doubt, this revelation of the Qur'an will cause many of them to go bananas. <laughs> will cause many of them to 
increase in Tughyan, in being wicked, and in kufr, in, in acts of disbelief. That's fine. And essentially what Allah is saying to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and that is okay. Sawa'un alayhim an anzartahum am lan tundirhum la yu'minu. This is also a consistent theme in the Qur'an. There are just some people that are not going to believe. Allah said that what? He is the one that has created all of you. Some of you are going to be kafir, and some of you are going to be believers. Some of you are going to be disbelievers, some of you are going to be believers. But just because a great many ignorant people will increase in wickedness is, 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 is no reason to not continue to preach the message. Because as some of the Mufassirin have said, this kathiran minhum, many have understood that a great many of them, this great many of them is contextualized or rather uh, it, it is not meant to be universal in its temporal sense. So right at that moment, yes, most of them, Eh, they're not going to go along with it. But obviously, a great many people after the death of the Prophet Sallallahu and as Islam spread, a great many people from the Christians and even from the Jews become Muslim. So also we have to remember it's not about working on commission. It's just simply working for the truth. فَلَا تَأْسَ عَلَى الْقَوْمِ الْكَافِرِينَ right? And so he says to the Prophet, like, لَا بَأْسَ لَا تَأْسَ right? Don't grieve yourself. Don't worry about the people who are kafir right now. If they remain kafir, they will come back to us, we will judge them, it's none of your concern. But there will be some of them in the future, they will. So as, we, as I mentioned this morning, there's a beautiful part of the beginning of the 60, 62nd chapter, Surah Al-Jumu'ah, that Allah says, هُوَ الَّذِي بَعْثَ فِي الْأُمِّيِّينَ رَسُولًا Allah Ta'ala is the one that has sent Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to the ignorant, unlettered people. Right? مِنْهُمْ As one of them, يَتْلُوا عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتِهِ And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is first commanded to simply recite the Qur'an to the people. The very first thing is to recite the Qur'an to the people so they are aware of what revelation is. Then the second thing that the Prophet ﷺ did for them, وَيُزَكِّهِمْ Purify people. Purify them in their beliefs and even in their body and in their food. وَيُعَلِّمُهُمُ الْكِتَابِ وَالْحِكْمَةِ Then he's going to teach them the Qur'an, meaning now, what does it mean? وَتَطْبِيقُهُ and now it's going to what? How to apply it in their lives. And in the next ayah, Allah says, وَآخَرِينَ مِنْهُمْ لَمَّا يَلْحَقُوا بِهِمْ Then Allah is saying that there were people that will come after him. Now, some of the Sahaba said that this could refer to some of the Quraysh, but actually most of the Mufassirin, going back to the Sahaba, have said that actually this uh, this hum, this akharina, these others that will come after that will what be they will be purified, they will become Muslim, they will be taught the book. It means what? Ba'da tawafa Muhammad sallam. They will come after the passing of the Prophet. They will never meet him in their life. But they will believe in Allah, they will believe in the book, and they will believe in him, and they will become Muslim, and in so they will be purified and they will learn the Qur'an and they will be the people of paradise. So, not being too overly concerned about some people rejecting and then also being aware, you know, it's like what we have today. There is a vocal minority that can through policy, government policy, control of the media, social media, other forces, can make their voices seem a lot louder than what they are. So don't be fooled by this. Inna <laughs> amanu 
من آمن بالله واليوم الآخر وعمل صالحا فلا خوف عليهم ولا هم يحزنون Indeed the believers and the Sabians, Christians, right, Jews, whoever truly believes in Allah in the last day and does good, now this is a verse that is greatly misunderstood by some people, right? Allah says what? لا خوف عليهم ولا هم يحزنون that they will have no fear and right they they should not grieve the fact that it begins in the ladina amanu who are the who is the and those that believe the muslims walladina ahadu was sabiuna wan nasara man amana billah wa yawm al akhir this is not simply saying that oh for those jews and the christians that now have just got through what rejecting the quran rejecting uh, the Prophet of all these things, and then now turning on and saying, oh, well, you know, it's okay, as long as they believe in Allah on the last day. What is implied here is that those that are going to come from those backgrounds that accept it, or those that followed their prophets and their messengers and their books correctly in their times, then... We don't, so this also helps to put to well, what about people that lived in the rainforest, or what about people that lived a long time? Allah is saying, those people, if they believed in Allah on the last day and they followed what was given to them by way of their prophets or messengers, that they have nothing to fear. But then now goes right back to Bani Israel. And we made a pact, we made a covenant with Bani Israel, and we sent to them many, many messengers. Why do they have to keep sending messengers to Bani Israel? Because they were constantly discontented with what was revealed to them, they would not accept it. They would try to change the verbiage or change the wordage or change the meaning. Right? When a messenger would come to them from Allah, this is in their own scriptures, you can go look up. If they came with something that they didn't desire, right? Bima la tahwa. Bima la tahwa. Look at the, the, we talked about the importance of the, the, the Arabic language here. What did not align with their hawa. The word hawa in Arabic, like shahwa. Hawa means what? Your passions. Your passions that are what? That that your, your 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 likes your desires without any contemplation of revelation. I just want to do what I want to do, kind of like when the young man came to the Prophet sallam, and he said, "Ya Rasulullah, I like to make zina, so you know, make it permissible for me to do so." And of course, the the Prophet sallam said, "Well, you know, you know, instead of just telling him haram alik." You know, no, you can't do. He engaged him. Would you want this to same thing to be done to you know your mother, your aunt, your sister, the women of your tribe? Oh, of course, no, no, no. Of course, you know. So, alhamdulillah, the man understood it and he never went back to it. And so he was acting upon his hawa. Much of the passions that we have, it's not necessarily wrong to have them, but it can be wrong to execute them either in part or in whole. So like having sexual desire is not haram. It's only permissible if it's first off between a man and a woman in marriage. Right? There, is no, there is no lawful way for a man to actualize a sexual passion between himself and another man. There is, so that's a complete prohibition. And vice versa, you know, or, or likewise, like a woman and a woman. A man and a woman can actualize their sexual desire, carnal passion for one another, but only if it's done within marriage. But it's it's hawa, it's a it's a passion. But when your passion becomes your furqan, when your passion becomes the way that you think about 
everything in the world and that it must conform to that and you will reject the truth because it does not conform to that then that's when it becomes blameworthy so as Allah says what كُلُّ مَا جَاءَهُمْ رَسُولًا بِمَا لَا تَهْوَى أَنفُسَهُمْ فَرِيقًا كَذَّبُوا One part of them, of Bani Israel, they would just simply reject. They wouldn't accept. وَفَرِيقًا يَخْتُلُونَ And another would actually take it to the point of violence. They would kill that messenger. And then as Allah says, وَحَسِّبُوا أَلَا تَكُونُوا فِتْنَا you thought that there wouldn't be any repercussions for doing so? That you could kill my messengers and there would be no repercussion? That you could reject my message and there would be no re repercussions? Right? Right? So they turned a blind eye. They, they, they essentially blinded themselves. Right? Like they became blind. So they blinded themselves. And they became sum, deaf. But thumma tab Allahu alayhim. Even in that, Allah turned to them with rahmah and shafaqa, with mercy and compassion. And He turned to them in forgiveness after they repented from doing so. But again, the law says, "What thum amal wa sammu kathir minhum." However, this is the issue, and this is the lesson to be learned here. It's one thing to commit a sin; we all commit sins. It's none of us are in, none of us are capable of not committing sins. But sins of a certain gravity, but also of a certain frequency can result in one's damnation. So, as Allah said, what? They did that. They killed some, I mean, think about it. They killed some of the messengers of Allah, and He forgave them. They turned a blind eye and a deaf ear to revelation, and Allah forgave them. عليهم. But then after Allah forgave, and this is also an important lesson for us, putting aside is also because this is the you know all of the Quran is a message to the Muslims. We often ask ourselves when we do something, oh, I, I did this thing and Allah won't forgive me. Like, no, no, Allah can forgive anybody. Look, Allah forgave Bani Israel for murdering his messengers. I mean, for murder and then murdering messengers. And Allah says, What? Allah forgave them. What we fixate on is, oh, I did this horrible thing and Allah won't forgive me. That's ridiculous. Allah can forgive anything and says that he often will. But what we should be focusing on is, well, imagine that you committed a sin. Let's say even it was a great sin and you ask Allah for forgiveness. And you proceed with the, okay, Alhamdulillah, Allah forgives all sins. But then when you depart from that maghfirah and tawbah, when you depart from that, do you strive to not go back and commit those sins again? Or do you almost double down? Because look, this time Allah says, Thumma amal wa sammu. Now, it's almost like they took Allah's mercy for granted, that they had a sense of entitlement, and now a great many of them from Bani Israel now have turned a blind eye to revelation. And a great many of them have become deaf and have become unreceptive to revelation. So that is the punishment of you sometimes, you know, we, we worry, oh my God, I did this and Allah. No, it's not so much, of course, you, you should be concerned whether Allah will forgive you or not. The main concern is, are you going to then return and do something even more egregious? Wallahu basirun bima ya'amalun. And Allah sees all of what they do. And of course, 
this is all in the context of Ya Ayuha Rasul, O Messenger. Right? Deliver the message. This is how great many of them are. A few of them get it right. Many of them are deviant. You know, we've even uh, had them, we've sent messengers to them over and over and over, which is a great, you know, it's an incredible uh, gift that Allah sends you multiple, multiple, multiple messengers to just one qawm. Like we as the Muslims, because we are not one ethnicity, yes, we accept all of the NBA. We accept Jesus, we accept Abraham, we accept Noah, we accept Moses, We those we know and those we don't know, we accept them all. Alayhim salam ajma'in. May Allah bless all of them. But we cannot say that, oh, that we, like, as a people, had, you know, all of these messengers sent over and over and over and over and over. But Bani Israel had messenger after messenger at just to the same group of people over and over and over and over and over. It's a great blessing, but it's also a sign of maybe somebody needs a Q-tip to clean out their ears to listen. So they, over and over they receive these messengers. Over and over and over they either reject it or they kill some of them. And even when Allah is merciful and forgives them for something as heinous as killing a, a, a messenger, then what? Now it becomes like a culture. Now it becomes like a culture because now what? Kathir minhum, right? Now most of them, a lot of them are going to be like that. لَكَدْ كَفَرَ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا إِنَّ اللَّهُ هُوَ الْمَسِيحُ وَابْنُ مَرْيَمُ to we'll perhaps uh, end with uh, the, the, this, these two uh, last two verses here. To ho hopefully this will settle any confusion amongst the Muslims about the status of the people of the book, particularly now the Christians. Laqad. The word laqad in Arabic, it means... Without a doubt, it's finished, it's over. Laqad kafar al those people are kafir. They're outside of Islam. They are not a believer. Even though Allah talks about what? Al Yahud wa Nasara wa Sabiuna, wa Ladina min Kablihim, wa all those people, wa men amana billahi, wa amina salih, all that stuff about, oh, anybody that believes in Allah on the last day. But then now Allah is coming back to some of those people he just mentioned. He said, kafir al qal Allahu huwa al ibn Maryam. There is no doubt that anyone that says that God, that Allah Ta'ala, is the Messiah, the son of Mary, they are a kafir. Full stop. A Christian that believes that Allah is Jesus. When they say Jesus is Lord, this person is not a believer. They believe in their own passions. They have taken their own hawa, their own passions, and deified them. They have taken the words of shaitan, and they have deified them. They are a kafir. لَقَدْ كَفَرَ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا إِنَّ اللَّهَ that's it. وَقَالَ الْمَسِيحِ يَا بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلِ And the Messiah said to Bani Israel, Sayyidina Isa alayhi salatu salam, اِعْبُضُ اللَّهِ رَبِّي وَرَبُّكُمْ Worship Allah who is my Lord and your Lord. إِنَّهُ مَنْ يُشْرِكْ بِاللَّهِ Now here is the thing. Though the Ahl al-Kitab, particularly the Christians, we do refer to them as what? The people of the book. We don't call them mushrikun. This is something important. Christians are not mushrik in the sense of that is the, uh, uh, the defining characteristic of who they are. But they do commit shirk, no doubt. They do associate partners with Allah by either saying he's three in one or that he is, right, that he is the, the, uh, the Messiah, Jesus. They do associate partners with Allah. إِنَّهُ مَنْ يُشْرِكْ بِاللَّهِ Anyone, anyone, assuredly, anyone that associates partners with Allah, 
فقد حرم الله عليه الجنة. This should again hopefully pretty much be an open and shut case on the fate of Christians that believe that Jesus is God or Jesus is Lord or that Allah is three in one. That Allah has said he will make haram paradise for them. Allah will forbid their entry into paradise. فَقَدْ حَرَّمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ الْجَنَّةِ It's just, it's pretty straightforward. وَمَأْوَاهُ النار. And their final destination will be the fire. وَمَا لِلظَّالِمِينَ مِنْ أَنصَارِ And those people who are the people of dhulam, they will have no helpers. And this is important that today we understand again a dhalim, and therefore dhulam, right? An oppressor. See, even the word dhalim, in certain contexts, it can mean an oppressor. But in another context, it can mean somebody, I guess you could say, is just evil, a wrongdoer, or really they oppress their own soul by sacrificing its salvation in the hereafter through incorrect belief and action. So when Allah says, <clears throat> وَمَالِ الظَّالِمِينَ مِنْ أَنصَارِ You know, I'm just saying sometimes in the English they will always translate ظَالِم and ظُلَم as oppressor and oppression. You know, ظُلَم uh, is also related to ظُلُمَات right? darkness. That is uh, darkness, something that is going to uh, ultimately uh, 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 subject a person to the torments in the hereafter in the fire. لَقَدْ كَفَرَ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا اللَّهُ ثَالِثُ الثَّلَاثَ Likewise, anyone that says that Allah is three or a three, uh, a third of three, three in one, the Trinity, they are a kafir. They are not a believer. وَمَا مِنْ إِلَهٍ إِلَّا إِلَهٌ وَاحِدٌ And there is no God except the one God. وَإِنْ لَمْ يَنْتَهَوْا عَمَّا يَقُولُونَ And if these people do not cease and desist from insisting on saying this, لَيَمَسَّنَّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا مِنْهُمْ عَذَابٌ عَلِيمٌ then those that can that insist on saying this, that are kafir from amongst them, they will be tormented in the fire. But in even at the end of it, I said I'll end with this too, but I think actually we'll end with the 74th verse. Afala yatubuna ilallah. Even after all of this, look, Allah is not interested. And this is also an important lesson for us. I will end on this because I want this as a takeaway. Allah has made it very clear. If you are a person that says God is three in one, a trinity, or that he is one of his creation or one of his creation is him, that Jesus is God, the Messiah is God, Jesus is Lord. This is a person that if they don't cease and desist from this, they will go into the fire. Simple as that. Their destination is the hellfire. That being said, and this is why we go back to the verse we began today. Ya ayyuha rasul balig ma unzila ilayka min rabbik. O messenger, convey to the people clearly what has been revealed to you from your Lord. So yes, we could say one part or a major component of that is if you believe that Allah is three in one, if the Allah resembles his creation or is his creation, then you are a person destined for the fire. However, you are also invited to cease and desist from this, to repent from it. Allah says, أَفَلَا يَتُوبُونَ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَيَسْتَغْفِرُونَ Will not the people of the book, will they not turn back to Allah? And will they not ask forgiveness for him? Wallahu ghafoorun rahim. 
Allah is pardoning and merciful and forgiving. So to convey the message of Islam is bashiran wa nadiran. It is to, or sometimes nadiran and bashiran. <laughs> it is to warn people about their incorrect beliefs to, so that they may change them and know that there will be consequences for their beliefs. There will be consequences. But it is also to invite them to salvation and invite them to goodness. Not like, oh, you know, come and be like us in terms of, well, you know, uh, whatever our particular cultural thing is. But no, come and be Muslim. Come and submit to your Lord. Come and find out who Allah truthfully really is. Who is your Lord? Who is really Jesus? Who was really Abraham? Who were who, who were all of these prophets and messengers? What are these books really saying? What is in Revelation? Come back to the truth. And in doing so, turn back to Allah. If Allah forgave some of you or your ancestors for murdering some of his beloved prophets and messengers, then it, clearly if you come and repent for this, Allah will accept from you. And you can become, inshallah, one of the one of the believers, a real believer, of which then, as Allah says, لا خوفنا عليهم ولا هم يحزنون that they will be people who they have nothing to fear, right, and they sh and they won't grieve. Hopefully, this paints a certain kind of picture for us, not to be overly concerned about being liked versus being understood, for Islam to be clearly seen and articulated of course that means we have to live it not to be discouraged when the people that we want to you know embrace islam uh, haven't embraced it that allah ta'ala for instance says in surah al-qasas he told the prophet وسلم, you don't get to guide who is beloved to you. Or another way of putting it in, in this verse, إِنَّكَ لَا تَهْدِي مَنْ أَحْبَبْتِ Just because you love somebody doesn't mean that Allah must love them as well. You might love that person. Like in this case, talking about the, the uncle of the Prophet, Abu Talib. Right? The uncle of the Prophet, alayhi salam, was a kafir. And the Prophet so said, I wanted to pray for him. Allah said, no, 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 no. You don't get to make who's beloved to you, beloved to me. And therefore, because, because, because if you love them, I must love them. And if I love them, I will guide them. No, 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 no. It doesn't work that way. Allah will give guidance exclusively to whomever he exclusively chooses. But we want to have this nadiran wa bashiran, give the warning, but also give the good news, give the encouragement, invite people to the truth. And if they accept it, don't grandstand and have a sense of smugness that they have joined us. No, alhamdulillah, we are trying to be a, a tawabun as well. We are trying to be the people of repentance as well. Any questions upon anything covered thus far? This will take us up to the uh, 74th verse. So, alhamdulillah, then we'll be back uh, next week. And the plan is to do our, because it'll be the beginning of the month. So, inshallah, we'll be doing our three classes Tafsir Maliki Fiqh and our uh, our uh, Aqidah class of continuing to read from Sahih Muslim, inshallah. Uh, that'll be next week. Jazakum ala khairan. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam.